We're in Building 180 at uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. That's headquarters, so somewhere right over our head is Charles Alachi. He's the boss, the director of the laboratory. But much more significant for us, we are here with Emily and uh, someone else that we're going to get to know a little bit better. Emily. Hi, Matt. What a great place to be. It's spectacular to be here and so exciting to be waiting for this rover to land. So you're going to take us through this in a couple of tours, and I think this time we're going to focus mostly on the cameras, and there are a lot of them, I guess, on Curiosity. And then we're going to do another segment, probably will air next week on the radio show, about the other instruments. So where do we start? We'll start with the cameras, and there are 16 of them on this rover. Mm. We're going to start at the top and work our way down. So right at the very top, we have ChemCam, which is the laser on this robot's head. It can shoot a laser at a rock target, vaporize a little bit of it, and while it's doing that, it has a telescope that takes a very high resolution photo of that spot that it's vaporized. And then it does that in order to get a chemical and mineral analysis. And this is the ray gun that we Earthlings are sending to Mars. That's right. We're sending it to Mars, not Mars sending it to us. It's a nice change. Okay, so moving down from ChemCam, we have the mast cams. These are these two different sized eyes on the rover. They're color cameras. One of them is zoomed in, one of them is a more wide angle. And those are designed to take color photos and actually HD video um, of the Martian landscape, although it's at a slightly lower frame rate than we do on Earth. It's four to seven frames per second, depending on the exposure time. Moving outside from the mast cams, we have the nav cams. And those two pairs of nav cams are actually identical on this rover to the ones that were on Spirit and Opportunity. The only difference here is that there's two of them, there's two pairs on this rover, there was only one pair on Spirit and Opportunity, because this rover is designed to last an awful lot longer than Spirit and Opportunity were, so we need to make sure that these cameras do not fail. There's a backup pair for redundancy. All right, so moving down from the mast, we go all the way down here. Let's crouch right down here. And we have the has cams. Now these cams are much like the, the nav cams up at the top of the mast. Um, they are designed, they're very much the same as the ones that were on Spirit and Opportunity, and they look out in front of the rover to see the landscape, to get a good idea of the 3D landscape right in front of the rover and give um, some context for this gigantic robotic arm to be able to place its instruments very accurately on rock and soil targets. And speaking of that robotic arm, we go all the way down to the front, and this right here is the hand lens imager. It's like a geologist's hand lens. They use it to get very up close, very high resolution um, pictures of the rocks and soils right in front of the rover. This one, like the mast cams, is full color, um, and it's also got its own uh, light sources, so it can illuminate the target very brightly. It's a really awesome camera. So this is an analog to the hand lens that a geologist would carry. Absolutely. These guys are built to be uh, robotic geologists as much as possible because, it's, after all, it's for the geology that we're sending these rovers to Mars. Now, there's one other very cool thing about this hand lens. Because it's on the end of an extremely long arm, it's actually taller than the rover, so it can hold this hand lens camera right over its head and actually use it almost like a periscope. It can take self-portraits and it can see over rock walls, so it's, it's a pretty amazing instrument. It is entirely an amazing instrument. Sixteen cameras, you said? Sixteen cameras. And we will be back next time to talk about the other instruments on Curiosity. And Emily, thank you so much. We'll see you then. All right. Thank you, Matt. Emily Lockwall is the Science and Technology Coordinator for the Planetary Society and a contributing editor to Sky and Telescope magazine. She joins us every week on Planetary Radio, but this time and next time from JPL.